Happy New Year, everybody. We are back at it with some analog collage cut and paste. I have this wonderful image from a fashion magazine, and I actually already did some cutting, some precise cutting. I'm going to hang on to these pieces because out of this image, we will be making two collages. It's not a flip side. If you are a follower on my channel, I actually have a playlist for flip sides, but that's not what we're doing today. It's just going to be a basic, fun, analog type thing and scanning into the computer. But I want to take you along with me for the ride. So we got this cut and ready to go. I've created something of a template. These pieces are nice and clean and very interesting. I have been playing around with them. And even if I wasn't going to use them for another collage, I would definitely hold on to these. One of my practices is that I try to keep my pieces in clear plastic sleeves, especially these delicate, finely cut pieces. I file them in a cabinet and I look them up later. And I do that with my final collages also. I, I don't have a large booklet portfolio for my collages yet. Everything after I create it becomes digital in a sense. So, but we're not digital now. We're gonna get to it and do some analog work. Pieces like these, they're very delicate. The edges are highly defined. I try to cut them out as carefully as I possibly can. I cut them out. Sometimes I just start cutting objects just for fun because I don't know what direction I might be taking with the collage. I just cut them. If I use them, fantastic. If I don't, again, into a nice clean plastic sleeve and into my file cabinet and I can always go back to them later. I actually have lots of pieces like these that I will refer to again, and they do make their way into a collage. You might remember from, I think a video or two ago, this piece. I really love the way it looks. I actually made it kind of thin, so it's almost could be used for decoupage. It's not going to go into this particular collage, but I was planning on using it. I was very excited about it because I love the pattern and I didn't end up using it. That's okay because I simply put it off to the side and I will return to it. It will be making an appearance in this video though, so never fear. Again, what I'm doing here is not um, picking up little dust crumbs off of my workstation. It's painter's tape. I just cut a, up or actually tear up a couple little pieces and it's pretty forgiving in terms of not ripping ephemera when you apply it to keep it in place like I want to do here. I want to keep this piece in place and not take up any of the ephemera, but I'm removing some of that adhesive. And by doing that, I try to do it the cleanest way possible. I'll cut off a piece, tear off a piece, and find a clean surface and then pick up, pick off some of that adhesive. Just take off the adhesive as much as possible. You don't need a lot of adhesive for keeping something in place temporarily so you know what you're doing next. So I, I recommend that and actually you can keep reusing a piece over and over again. There's quite a bit of adhesive on the painter's tape. So you need to be careful, especially when you're working with fragile paper. This pink print is very fragile. I don't want to rip it too much. If it rips, I'll find something else to cover it with. But this is my go-to, and I'll probably use these pieces definitely for these collages in this video. And I might use them again in the next one. This packing tape, however, is not forgiving. And it's just regular packing tape. Buy it at Home Depot in bulk. It is very clean, it is heavy duty, it will last a long time, it's gonna keep my piece in place, but again, not forgiving. If I have to pull it up from here, especially on this vintage paper, I might be in for a little trouble and I may have to change my plans, but I do actually prefer using packing tape now for the backs of my collages. I love Mod Podge glue, I will use Mod Podge glue, I will be using it in this piece as well. 
but I don't use as much as I used to because of the packing tape. It keeps things nice, clean, and dry, and that wrinkling effect doesn't happen as much. I can't stress enough why I love this technique, cutting out the image and then playing with different ephemera underneath it. I can't stress to you enough how this changes the game for me. I can play with different pieces of ephemera. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be this, although I'm, I'm going to definitely go with this fruit, but I can see, well, how does this look? I, I can grab other elements and see, you know, maybe something else will look better than what I already planned because it just allows me, wow, oh, you know what? That does look kind of cool. Hmm. Oh no, what have I done? Changing the plan, changing the game in the middle of the plan. <sighs> this is why I love collage also because you can change everything around. Wow, I really like the way that looks. I was gonna use this in the other collage, so I'm gonna hold off. I'll put it here to remind me. But this is why I love using the cutout and I can play around with it and see what I come up with. Thing with collage, I make plans. I always make plans with collage and what happens, I change them. And that's the whole point of collage. You may make a very specific plan and it takes you in a whole other direction and that's what it's all about, which can be frustrating for some people if you want more control, like if you're working with oil paints, for example. And collage, I, I like it because it's forgivable, approachable and oh, just a lot of fun. the Mod Podge. I will need it for these next pieces and my trusty wax paper. I have shared before in other videos the benefits of using the wax paper. Again, things stay pretty neat and clean with it. Put you off to the side, Mr. Stained Glass. I will be getting to you later. Keeps things nice and clean and you make something of a temporary sticker. So this is attached to the back with the packing tape, but I'm also going to ensure it stays in place with a little bit of Mod Podge. Not too much at all because it's already adhered. So what I like to do is get the dab going on, a little bit of glue on my paintbrush. This is actually, um, I got this at a sidewalk sale. It is actually, as you can see, it's totally trashed but I got it at a sidewalk sale outside a makeup store in South Pasadena, California for like 25 cents. It was a whole pack of them. So makeup brushes are awesome for collage. And if you keep them sort of, uh, well, you keep the brush anyway healthy by washing it after use, you can keep it for a long time. I've had this one for actually several years and it is my go-to. You can use regular brushes also. Regular paint brushes are just as good. Uh, the class I'm going to be teaching later this month in Monrovia, California, I'll put the link in the description for that. I provide the participants with paintbrushes. But on my own here at home, I just use these little makeup brushes. They work very well. The brush hairs, like I said, you keep them, keep them clean and it'll be good to you later. So I'm just applying a little bit of insurance because the strawberries and raspberries are adhered to the back of the pink print with the packing tape, but just a touch of glue and everything should stay forever. Ah, now we have this eye. I really like this eye. And now this is what I mean by turning something into a temporary sticker. All I'm doing is a little bit of the Mod Podge on the wax paper, taking the image and just dabbing it atop of that bit of glue. You really don't need a lot. If you, you know, you can add some later. So now it has a nice little tacky surface. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more glue, just a touch more, not too much. You don't wanna saturate it because you know, there is that chance of wrinkling. And I think her eye was around here. There we go. That's what I was going for. Now the other nice part about the wax paper taking a small piece like this and pressing it upon the ephemera that you applied the Mod Podge to. 
that smooths it out. It also picks up excess. We don't have any issue with that now because I'm trying to be easy with my adhesive amounts. Picks up excess and it takes it away from the paper and the image. So I am very happy with the way this is turning out. I'll save this off to the side. The wax paper you can use again and again also. You don't have to toss it. I have a bunch of little scraps like this. You, know, you don't need to be wasteful. And this type of wax paper, I got it at 99 cent store. And this roll is going to last me for a very long time. So I'm, I'm happy with that. You can use any type of paper, but the reason I like the wax paper for smoothing out pieces that were adhered to a surface is because of the resistance to the glue. Regular paper will stick and maybe pull up on your image paper. You don't want that. Wax paper won't do that. It might be difficult to see, but I got a little heavy handed with my adhesive just now after I was lecturing about how I try to be easy with my adhesive. This is where the wax paper comes into play nicely. I'm going to place it here because there was a lot of Mod Podge I just applied. I don't need that much. If you can see it, it may be too much. So I'm just uh, removing it. And now I'm going to go ahead and adhere my kale to the hair. So this is where you can pick it up. And I can hang on to this a little longer and use it just to scoop up excess adhesive. Really good for that. So for 99 cents, you can get a lot of cleaning done and keep your collages nice and tight. So more hints here with adhesive and wax paper and ephemera. Again, delicately cut. I want to have these edges have some type of adhesive on them, but they are delicate. This is where the wax paper comes in handy too. You can make sure there is a good amount of adhesive on these delicate edges by simply pressing the ephemera onto a little pool of adhesive on wax paper. It gets just enough and you should be able to attach it safely and not get too many bubbles. Bubbles, unfortunately, are part of the risk of doing collage. Uh, I'm trying to find ways where I don't get as many bubbles. That's why I like using the packing tape, but I think we're gonna be okay here. Yeah, we'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it to her head. There we go. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of wrinkling under here and we didn't use that much glue. Go ahead and take care of this. Actually, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm not going to cut this because I may want to take her out of this background and put my own background on later, whether it's um, an analog background where I use another um, piece of paper for a background or if I scan it into Photoshop. But we'll, we'll see what we do later with that. I'm not sure if I am done yet with uh, this one, but I'm going to start working on the excess pieces from the original collage. And these were some of the elements I want to use. Not sure again if you remember this from the video, I think the video before this one. Not sure. I might use it. I'm excited about it. I, I love the way it looks. I know that I want to paste whatever I do here on the back of this. Got this from a travel magazine. It wasn't triple A. We're fortunate here in uh, Southern California in the beach cities. They have a really interesting real estate market and they're able to afford these beautiful brochures to advertise the real estate market and you can get them for free walking down the main drags in the beach cities. That is where I get a lot of my ephemera and it's high quality paper and ink. So I grab them and I use them in my workshops and in my videos. So this is going to be a background. And again, I think I got it from a real estate magazine. One way you can get free ephemera when you're on vacation, look for free handouts. Um, no, handouts are free. Look for those free publications. 
go to their local libraries. They have the uh, little racks on the outside, but the real estate markets in, especially in affluent areas, you will find some wonderful publications and they're fun to read too and look through. So I am going to play with this for a second. I think I already have in mind what I'd like to do. A lot of um, delicate cuts were already made. This was actually part of another magazine. This is where I got it from. They, it was a building. So these are windows from that building here. I'm not sure if I shared the process, so I didn't cut them out today. It was a couple days ago. So I have them ready to go. I have everything ready to go here. All that's left is pasting it to the surface. This is one of those unique videos. I'm not really doing any cutting. I might be later when I cut her out. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh, I like the way this is looking too. See, that's the neat thing about collage. You just kind of like throw everything there and let it fall where it may and shift it around and you come up with something really unique. So I'll be right back because I'm going to put her together next. I'm being silly here and people may not know what I'm doing. So what I did was, and I found this among my wonderful collage network on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, I noticed people were cutting out the whites of eyes. So as you can see here, there's nothing there. You can see right through it because I took out the whites. Here's a, another way of looking at it. It's dark. Now it's not. So the whites are cut out. You can have a lot of fun if you have a good image and a good image of an eye and then you can cut out the whites and you can really play around with it. difficult that might might be difficult to see. I did a small incision here to allow for this plug to go into her ear and make it look like more of a connection and also to offer some stability for the collage for the long term. And I think I'm good with that. So just to show you that, it's very difficult to see because it's such a small piece. I don't want to get too close to the camera and blur everything out for you guys. But I do this quite a bit now. And this came with just practice and seeing other YouTubers and collages on Instagram do these different little techniques. Making small incisions along the design that accommodates the design and inserting them. And it looks like that's the way it was always supposed to be. That of course she has a plug in her ear from this vintage magazine hand. So I like the way this looks. I'm gonna proceed from here. Just wanted to stop and explain that to you. Confession, I'm cheating a little bit off camera. So I had played with this last week. Here's my phone and here is the image. I'm sorry, that's upside down. Here is the image. No, it's not. Okay, right side up. And you can't see it very well, but the final image is gonna look something like this. I just have it on my phone. I take pictures of the ephemera as I go along, putting it in different directions and seeing what looks good. So uh, just a disclaimer there, this isn't um, something fresh from my mind, although I am uh, tweaking it a little bit here and there. Uh, nonetheless, I do have something I'm referencing that I did last week because it was a busy week for me. It was the beginning of the new year, so trying to get into the swing of 2023. I just take a lot of pictures, keep them on my phone, keep it as a reference point. It never actually turns out the exact way that I had it. That's also part of the fun of collage and what makes it so forgiving. I usually change, switch gears definitely all the time with collage. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be using these wonderful building pieces now. I originally did, and then I took them out. So in that cell phone picture I took of the collage, I had these pieces in it, and now I'm not even sure if I'm going to use them. So off to the side with you guys. 
And let me see what I was doing. Bring it back up. And I'm going to get back to work here as I fire up my old cell phone. Now the spill is broken. I thought this was going to be a no cut video and I had to trim this down almost like a no meat Monday, but uh, I failed. I thought we were going to have a no cut video and I thought that would be a really good way to play this up, but I had to make a little trim here because it just something about the line. I didn't like the way it was looking, so I went ahead and trimmed it. So, so much for a no cut video. Might be a little bit difficult to see. These are the things I think about when I'm working, as I'm working. I have her other eye here. You can't see it in the actual image, but it's a, a shadow of her eye. And I have it lined up with this dark line on the stained glass of this image. Those are the tiny things that I end up tweaking as I'm working because the initial image when I was playing with it, I wasn't thinking about those design elements. I like keeping things streamlined. I really wanted the edge of this piece to match up with the knuckle here on her finger. But I think more importantly, I want this black line to go into the shadow of where her other eye is. So maybe it looks like she's shooting a laser. It's not a laser. It has a very futuristic quality about it. I'm extremely pleased with the way this collage is coming out. Again, um, the Absurdist Collage Group on Instagram, and I'll put their link in this description. They have these challenges, and last week was futuristic, but I think I'm too late to submit this piece to that challenge. Maybe the next one. Definitely has a wonderful futurist, futuristic quality about it. Even though I took a lot of the adhesive off these pieces of painter's tape, and I've been using it throughout this collage, whenever I remove it from the ephemera, I'm still very, very delicate because there's always that off chance. There's still enough adhesive to grip on to your ephemera and pull up ink and tear paper. And then you have to make adjustments that you didn't want to make. So this is getting to be nearly finished. It's a smaller collage um, than what I normally do here on the channel. Don't worry, next week I think I'm going to be doing something a lot longer. So this little background was actually part of this watch that I cut out of one of my magazines. And I think I want to do something like this. Now, this is why I didn't go ahead and add the Mod Podge to the hands or the face yet because I still want to make some adjustments and add some things. And that's going to allow me to do this. So. The image, this is how the image is going to look. It's already has tape on the back, so it's going to stay put. I will add glue later, probably as the last thing I do, because I want to tuck in other pieces. And I love to tuck in the paper into the image like I did here. It looks cleaner. It looks more real. And especially if you are somebody who likes to work with Photoshop, then it's a really good option to do. So let me see about putting this in. And I am looking at, I am cheating and looking at my image on my phone to see what, what, what was I thinking? So here we go. Let's speed it up a little bit for you guys. I'm very pleased with the way this is turning out. This one's done, as far as I'm concerned. It, it's done. I was kind of contemplating using some color here, but where am I? Hmm, here's my thinking in progress. We don't know. Uh, are we done? I do like the balance of having the, the two circles. The only thing is for me, looking at this, I may want to take, I, I love the balance, but I also love the, the color palette with this. It's, it's simple. I think I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to leave out the rainbow and the parachute. 
Yeah, I'm going to leave it out. Keep it kind of simple. Uh, this is what I like. If you're sitting at home saying, no, no, add the, add the rainbow. I'm sorry, I'm going to leave it like this. Now, this is the other part that I love about using Photoshop and my scanner later. If I don't adhere this to this background, I can put it on another background another time. I'm free to do that. I don't have to add any more glue. If I was going to attach it to this background, I would probably use spray adhesive. I would not use Mod Podge, and I'm not going to use packing tape because that'll, that'll, that just won't look right, unless that's the look you're going for. But I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to scan this um, high resolution on my scanner, crop it, uh, maybe crop it so you don't see this hand floating in space like this, maybe crop it like a circle. I'm not sure yet. And that's something I can play with because that's the beauty about digital collage. And I have nothing but respect for digital collage artists. They are amazing. And I'm learning and meeting so many of them on Instagram. Uh, one that I met recently, and I'll put their uh, Instagram uh, name in the description, Zen Kayan. They're relatively new and their digital work is phenomenal. So please check that out if you're an Instagram person. They're not here on YouTube yet. I can't wait if they are. I will definitely follow them. But definitely check that out if digital collage is your thing. This is all about analog up to this point. So we're going to scan this and you'll see the image, uh, the final image as a scan um, from Photoshop. And I can play with the background as much as I want because it's not going to be attached to this. What are we going to do with this gal? I think I'm going to call her fruit salad. I don't know yet. I, I love the red and all that. I, I'm just not sure yet. And I'm not sure if I want to keep the red. And I was going to do something with the hands and I'm not sure if I am. So bear with me. I still have some more thinking to do. Another perk about not applying something permanently to a background, you can use that background again and again and again, or you can scan it and keep it on a digital file and then play with it again and again and again. Not sure if I'm going to do that with this one, but I can put the part partnering. Is that a word? Partnering. It must be. The partnering collage on the same background. See what I come up with here. Here's that uh, elusive rainbow. Will it work here? Does it work here? Huh. And you see, I really tried to use those buildings. I tried to cut out a hand. I'm just not, I'm not digging it. I mean, it looks kind of cool right here. I don't know. Does it? Should I? Oh, I don't know. No. No. Let's see. How does this look? Not bad. Or maybe by yourself. By yourself? I'm trying too hard to use something that I love. This is part of what they call in art school, killing your darlings. So this darling may need to go back into the file cabinet in a plastic sleeve next to this parachute. That's okay. We can use it again. No harm. I'm liking simple with these collages. I, I am appreciating that. And I think, I think we're done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my editor come in and take some pictures so you can see these up close, how they look. And we'll scan them, put them on their background, and they'll live digitally. Digital. Digitally. Partnering. Digitally. Okay, I got the words right. Thank you for joining me this week. I think I'm going to have something new for you next time, a little twist to our collaging adventures. Check out the links in the description for those other artists on Instagram. And also, if you're in the Southern California area, my Monrovia Collage Workshop, which starts on January 24th. Hope to see you there. And if not, I hope to see you back here on YouTube next week.